In this video, we're going to talk about the relationship between linear and angular quantities when I have a rigid body rotating. So I've got a disk with some kind of rotation this way. I'm just going to make it counterclockwise. And what I want to do to keep track of what's going on here is just paint a little spot on that disk at t equals zero. And we're going to watch that paint spot go around. So in a small time delta t, the paint spot might get to here. Then I can say that an angle of delta theta was covered during that time. And I'm going to give my disk a radius of r. And I'm going to talk about the amount of arc that was just covered. And I'm going to call that delta s. Again, it's assumed that this all happened in a time of delta t. So there's an old formula from geometry. s equals r theta. The arc length is equal to the radius times how much angle is subtended. And I'm going to apply that formula and say delta s must be equal to r delta theta. One thing I want to point out about this before we proceed is that I've said before that radians are a unitless quantity, and I can see that in this formula. Delta s is a length, r is a length, and that means delta theta must have no units at all. So radians actually are unitless. All right, the next step we're going to take here is to divide by delta t on both sides. I get delta s over delta t, the rate at which arc is traced out. And that's equal to r times delta theta over delta t. And then I just think about a small time limit. As delta t becomes very small, I have an instantaneous rate at which arc is traced out. That is the speed of that paint spot. And then on the right hand side, the small time limit of the rate of change in angle, that's angular velocity. And I get my first important formula out of this, v equals r omega. In my second picture, I'm going to allow the rate of rotation of the disk to start increasing, so it's spinning faster and faster. And anything I say here would also apply to a disk that was slowing down. And I'll just take one moment in time and say my paint spot was here. And then in another moment of time, delta t later, my paint spot is here. And my initial tangential velocity will be called v1. And then I said this thing was speeding up, so my next one better be longer. All right, these tangential velocities correspond to angular velocities of omega 1 in the initial state and omega 2, a little bit faster rotation in the final state. Now I'm going to look at the rate of change in that tangential speed. So I have delta v given by v2 minus v1, but that's r omega 2 minus r omega 1, but that's r delta omega. Then I'm going to divide by the time it took for this speeding up process. And I get delta v over delta t is equal to r delta omega over delta t. But that rate of change in angular velocity, that's angular acceleration. And what should I call delta v over delta t? That's the rate of change in the tangential speed of this paint spot. And we normally call that a tan. And it's given by r alpha. So that's our second important formula. Finally, I wanted to bring up that if this disk is, is changing its rotation rate, what I just found was the tangential component of the acceleration of that paint spot. So that's keeping track of the fact that the spot is moving faster and faster and faster. However, simultaneously, to move on a circular path, there must be a component of acceleration pointing to the center of curvature and it has to have a magnitude of v squared over r in order to keep the paint spot moving on a circular path. So just as a quick reminder, that centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. But it's often handier, especially when we start doing rotational kinematics problems all the time, to rephrase this in terms of omega. So instead of writing v squared over r, I'm going to replace v with r omega. Square the numerator and cancel one factor of r, and I get a new formula for centripetal acceleration as r omega squared. So that component of acceleration is always going to be there. Finally, I can wrap up our new list of formulas here by talking about the total acceleration, and that's the vector sum of these two components. They are perpendicular to each other because one is tangent, one is radial. 
and I could say a total is given by taking a vector sum of these two things. So if I'm talking about the magnitude of it, well, it's really just going to be the square root of a tan squared plus a centripetal squared. And occasionally you see a question about this in the problems. Let's apply some of these ideas to a simple example. So in this example, I have a propeller with blades of length 0.45 meters. And it's spinning with a constant rate of 2,000 rotations per minute. So immediately I see we're going to have kind of a unit conversion challenge here to go from rotations per minute to radians per second. And that's actually part A of the question. So omega is 2,000 rotations per minute 2,000 rotations for every one minute. And I'm going to tack on conversion factors until I get radians per second. So first, there's 2 pi radians in a rotation. Next, there's 1 minute for every 60 seconds. My minutes cancel. And I'm going to have radians per second as my surviving units. And rounding to three sig figs, I get 209 radians per second. Remember, radians are technically unitless. So if you're looking in the back of the book for an answer on a question like this, you may actually see 209 inverse seconds as the units. I prefer to just go ahead and write the radians because it helps my intuition. Part B, compute the speed at the tip of a blade. Well, that would be V equals R omega. That's 0.45 meters multiplied by 209 radians per second. And again, radians are unitless, so you can disappear them whenever you like. And I get 94.1 meters per second for the speed at the tip of a blade. Part C, compute the radial acceleration at the tip of a blade. So here we're talking about the centripetal part of the acceleration. There is no tangential acceleration because the rotational speed is constant in this example. And I'm going to use the formula r omega squared for this. Of course, you could use v squared over r if you like, and we already computed v. So I get 0.45 meters and then times omega squared, so that's 209 radians per second all squared again radians are unitless so I can see my units come out to meters per second squared that's good and I end up with a radial acceleration to three sig figs of 19,700 meters per second squared finally a little kinematics question find the time to rotate through 30 degrees so we have a rotation rate in radians per second Maybe if I just wrote 30 degrees in radians, it would make this easier. So I have a delta theta of 30 degrees. And you could treat this as a unit analysis question, or remember that it's a special angle equal to pi over 6 radians. But I'll just treat it as unit analysis. I have 360 degrees for every 2 pi radians. And I get a decimal approximation out of this of 0 0.524 radians. And I'm talking about constant angular velocity. So this is really just a distance equals rate times time kind of thing. If you like, it's really the first rotational kinematics formula, but with an alpha of 0 because I'm talking about constant speed. Okay, and now this just looks like subtracting the theta initial from both sides. Delta theta equals omega naught times t. In other words, amount equals rate times time. I'm trying to solve for t here. So t is the change in angle over my angular velocity. And that's 0.524 radians over 209 radians per second. I end up with seconds as my surviving unit, so that's a good thing. 
and I get 0 0.00251 seconds out of this, or I could call it 2.51 milliseconds.